Hi everybody, welcome to another video. Today we are adding a 2.5 inch SSD to this HP desktop computer. It is an M01-F0016. So let's get to it. So this is what I'm going to be using today, um, 2.5 inch SSD. I went with the Inland brand just to give it a shot. A 2.5 to 3.5 bay bracket. We have some screws here that came with the computer, so you definitely want to double check your packaging if you haven't found these screws yet. We have our uh, four M3x3 screws, which I had to get on my own. M3x5 screws would work too. A flat screwdriver 3.0. And a PH0 screwdriver as well. All right, so let us get to it. So here's the computer. First thing we gotta do is open up that side panel. So you only there's only one screw that we need to um, unscrew right there. So I'm just gonna grab the flat screwdriver and let's get to work. You can also use a Torx screwdriver too, I'm pretty sure. Um, I, I left my set so I wasn't able to test and find out which specific uh, torque screwdriver would work on this thing but I'm just using a flat screwdriver so removing the side panel here easy peasy so once you unscrew it, you just gotta pull it out and that's what the cover looks like nothing fancy HP really made it easy to access so that's pretty awesome so we need our flat screwdriver once again and remove this screw right here so easy peasy All right, so once you remove this screw, you can see right there, that's what it looks like in case you're curious. We can now lift this part. So I just gotta remove this gently. Piece of cake. Now we wanna disconnect the DVD drive. So there's two connections here. So just keep in mind they're straight connectors. Uh, you just wanna, it'll be easier for you to differentiate the uh, these cables from the um, SSD cables later. So you guys are gonna see. Let me get you guys a different angle. So I just gotta push this in, that green plastic thing, and it's gonna pop out. So let me show you guys again. So here are the connectors. They're both straight, as you can see. And then I'm pushing the DVD drive out easy peasy all right so the next thing we got to do is we got to remove the front cover or the face plate i guess is what they call it sometimes so just three of these we just got to lift it up and gradually push it out nice so pretty simple nothing too fancy Next, we have another screw here, so we just gotta unscrew it again using our flat screwdriver or torque screwdriver. If you have a torque screwdriver, so easy peasy. Oh yeah, it also doesn't have to be a, f a flat screwdriver 3.0 as well. You could probably use something of a similar size and it'll work just fine. So now, before we lift this out, you want to pay attention to the cables here. So we have some cables running through here, part of the cable management, I guess. You want to lift these off gently and we can remove this part so that that's where the um, ssd is gonna go so it was right here so there you go pretty simple all right oh yeah i wanted to show you guys so if you do have a 3.5 inch hd or hard drive you don't need a bracket or anything and you can just totally use the screws that came with the computer so let me get a 3.5 inch hard drive. So just as an example. So all it, all, it just goes in like that and then you just screw it in. But that is for a 3.5 inch hard drive. But uh, in this case we're using an SSD but I wanted to quickly show you guys. So for the SSD we have our uh, bay bracket here. We have our 120 gigabyte inland SSD which I've never used before. And then we have this. So I did remove the other screws. We only needed four, so I want I didn't want to confuse everybody. So the packaging did have eight, so I just wanted uh, four of them. And then now we want to use our M3x3 screws to screw in the SSD. 
Like I said, I had to get my own M3x3 screws. Um, to be honest, you don't even have to use this many screws. Two screws would do the trick, or even one actually. If you don't, if you know, it depends on how much you want it to like not move around. But uh, there's many ways. I know a lot of people that use many ways to secure their SSD, but I'm just trying to follow like, you know, proper procedure, I guess. So yeah, so I'm using four three by three. M3 by 3 screws to secure the SSD. Now, all we gotta do is put in our bay bracket. So four screws. So the four screws we're gonna use for this part did come with the desktop computer. So the reason why I have it facing this way is because I checked the connection and this is the easiest way that this SSD will fit um, with the wire connection so well you guys will see later I don't I'm trying not to make it like I'm trying not to overthink it so let us just secure this uh, SSD here and then after that we will connect this thing to the computer so let's see here all right screw number two Screw number three. And screw number four. So yeah, nothing too fancy. Let me just double check the screws. Not too tight. All right, so now we can put this back here. Put it down, awesome. So one good way to know um, our connection here, so we need to connect our SATA, right? So let me just show you guys this again, just in case. So I'm just showing you guys from a different angle. So we need our SATA data and SATA and our um, power for the SSD. So on this computer, it's two right angled connectors just to make it easier. So you can easily differentiate it from the straight connectors, uh, just in case you're not familiar with it. But um, yeah, so you just got to connect these two cables, which was, a, they're in the computer and they're ready to go. So it's like they wanted us to upgrade this computer. So the connections were already there, just letting everybody know. So I just got to hook those up. And yeah. Yeah, so that's the reason why I have the SSD facing um, uh, the other way. It's because of these connections. Because when I tested it, I wanted it to be a cleaner connection. So now we just got to screw this in. Now I'm going to return the uh, front front plate here. Or should I say faceplate? I guess some people call it a faceplate. I uh, just look at it like a front panel or something. Well, basically just the front of the computer. All right, so once that's in, easy peasy, we can put back the DVD drive. So yeah, I'm just trying to fix up the cables a little bit here. Just a little bit of cable management since, uh, you know, there's that thing, there's that kind of clip thing there that kind of helps you uh, guide the cables. Yeah, I'm just trying to do a little bit of pre-cable management here before we put in the DVD drive. All right, ah, good enough. Okay, so, okay, let us put in our DVD drive now. So I just gotta slide it in gently, voila. Now we can hook up the connections to the DVD drive. So it's pretty easy. This, you know, the two straight connectors. Yeah, that's why it's easy to differentiate, you know, in case you get it mixed up. So the two straight connectors are for the DVD drive. And, you know, the, these two right angle one was for the SSD. Just kind of wanted to, you know, it might be different for your computer though. But I think you'll find it pretty easy to find the cable since um, there's very few and they're really hard to confuse. So yeah, so once we have that plugged in, we can just put this back. 
And there was a what that's one screw. All right, very nice. Now we can put back the side cover. Side cover or side panel. And now we just got to screw it in. And then I will show you guys how to set up your new SSD. All right. So everything went well. The computer booted up fine. So now if you look at this PC, you're actually not going to see the new SSD yet. It's a brand new SSD, so we need to initialize it. So you can see the DVD drive, which is good, and you see the original C drive. So where's our second SSD? So I wanted to show you guys this, this real quick. So you're going to have to decide if you want to initialize it as GPT or MBR. It's really up to you depending on what you want. But um, usually from what I know, as it says here, most people use GPT when it's more than 2 terabytes of an SSD. Since this is just a 120 gigabyte SSD, I'm going to go into create and format hard disk partitions. And I'm just going to initialize it as MBR. So this is what I have on my screen here. It might be different for you. So you're going to have to decide. But for me, I'm just going to go with MBR. Nothing fancy. I'm going to click OK. So this is going to initialize the SSD. So now that it's initialized, we can actually format it. Right click it, new simple volume. And then I'm going to make it um, an NTFS. I'm going to assign it a letter. So I'm just going to go for the N NTFS. And I'm just going to name this thing Inland. Just kind of like, you know, what the name of the SSD is. So I know it's the second SSD. Nothing fancy. So I am going with NTFS. And then I'm just going to press Next, Finish. And it's good to go. So you can see that it showed up now. 120 gigabytes. Well, specifically, like, it's lower than, you know, capacity. It's like... You know, but it's an extra SSD and it's pretty much set up and it is good to go. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Take it easy.